On my body, I've added circles, each one representing a part of me that at one point I wanted to change. I hated the redness on my cheeks, I hated the bumps on the back of my arms, I didn't like my nose, I wish I had more abs, and honestly, I wish I had more muscle pretty much everywhere. My arms, my calves, my shoulders, my chest, the list goes on and on. And no matter how much time goes by, I feel like nothing's changed, even though people have assured me that I've made a big difference, but that feeling inside me stays within, and that feeling, that's body dysmorphia. Morphia. Morphia. It's an issue on the rise, especially in the age of social media. So in today's video, we're gonna dive deep into this problem for a greater understanding and hopefully some solutions. Our first stop in understanding body dysmorphia is meeting up with one of the world's top plastic surgeons, Dr. Six. The main question I wanna ask you is, what's your definition of body dysmorphia? So the textbook definition of body dysmorphia is when somebody is preoccupied with their appearance, uh, this is a psychiatric condition that actually pathologically interferes with your day-to-day -day life. People spend abnormal amounts of time thinking about it. Do you find that there's a relationship between what you do with plastic surgery and body dysmorphia? Um, so we actually look for body dysmorphia and we turn people away. Really? Plastic surgery is wow. not the cure for body dysmorphia. People think of it as a physical thing, it's not. It's a psychiatric thing. It's a psychiatric condition and plastic surgery is not a psychiatric surgery. Do you see like a relationship like with the increased social media with how you with your work and body dysmorphia and plastic surgery? Unfortunately yes. I, I, I think the you know explosion of the internet and social media has been wonderful. It's, it's been amazing but there has been a, a significant downside to it. With platforms like Instagram being very very visual, people are posting pictures, people are posting videos and nobody puts out their real self these days. Yeah. Uh, everybody puts out their best version. So it started with, you know, people, you know, uh, Kim Kardashian what, did a thousand pictures before she posts one, something like that. Uh, people take a lot of pictures, find the best pose, best lighting, best view of themselves. And now with technology, we have filters. We have things like apps that can modify how you look. We've come to a, a, a time where what you see on the internet is pretty much humanly impossible. It's pretty clear our standard of normal has gotten to the point that it's humanly impossible to achieve them naturally. Even celebrities with access to everything and anything are feeling overwhelmed with the pressures to be perfect. I want to have the body to wear it proudly, and then I want the booty that I don't have. My body's very young. Making sure I look like a woman and not like a 12-year-old boy. There's always some standard of beauty that you're not meeting. Because if you're thin enough, then you don't have that ass that everybody wants. But if you have enough weight on you to have an ass, then your stomach isn't flat enough. It's all just f***ing impossible. <laughs> it's dangerous psychiatrically. I think exactly, there's a yeah. lot of anxiety. There's a lot of depression. There's a lot of body, body image issues because people don't understand that what they're seeing is not real. It could be something malicious where you actually have influencers in the fitness industry who may be filtering or faking their appearance and then selling fitness programs or milkshakes or mm -hmm. skinny green tea or whatever other stuff. And people think that they can go out, follow this, this advice and get those results. Um, not, not to pick on my favorite people out there, the Kardashians, Kylie Jenner, that lipstick is not what gave her the lips. Let's be honest about it. Yeah. Oh, really? Sorry to break it to you, but no, if you buy the color lipstick, you will not have those lips. Oh. Come on down. Let me uh, bring you to my playground. This is where I hang out all the time. It's where the magic happens. This oh my gosh. is where I spend most of my time. It's a science lab. <laughs> wow. It's an OR, a fully, fully fledged OR. We do all kinds of major surgeries in this place. Whoa. So if I came in looking like myself right now, and I was like, you know, I want to lose some fat, shape up the abs, add a little volume to the calves, arms a bit, we could do all that? If you're like 60 pounds heavier, yes. But like we could add some size to the calves potentially. So yeah, we, you know, the things people do is body implants, calf implants, biceps implants, uh, pec implants, butt implants, um, the female athletes get breast implants, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of options. There's all kinds of body sculpting. High def lipo is like the hottest things these days, okay. uh, which is liposuction in a way where you leave behind some fat to simulate muscle bulk. So it's very common, like for the abs, you, know, you, you get a six pack, uh, you get nice deltoids, nice back. Uh, so you so can shape a six pack with, with fat? You could, you could create a six pack on someone who doesn't 
really have a six pack. That's crazy. The liposuction itself is done with these kind of, so we attach a suction tubing to this and there's different shapes, different sizes, different parameters and we use these to suck out fat. Now, it looks very easy. Yeah. It seems, sounds very easy. Is uh, the fat go there? The fat goes here. Wow, and does it, this, this whole thing can fill up with fat? Yes, so that's two liters. Now, you would probably have like this much fat, yeah. but somebody else wow. could fill this, uh, this canister easily. Wow, so do you think plastic surgery is a solution for body dysmorphia? It is not. If someone has a body dysmorphia, or regardless of what it is, we do not operate. Wow, okay. When I have people come in for consultation, we always tell them, please bring in wish pictures because I find those visual, visual illustrations help me understand what it is that you want. And so often I say, no, 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 no. These are all filter pictures, impossible. You will wow. never look like this. Then I go and find pictures and I say, okay, this is what I imagine you will look like when I'm finished with you. And then are they okay with that? Once I explain, they're okay, okay most people. Uh, very rarely they're not. And if they're not, then I'm the wrong doctor for you. Right. Oh, it's a breast set. This is a, this is a breast set, but when I open this up and we open the surgical package, all inside is sterile. These are sterile green towels, which we take out. We use to drape the patient. We have sterile gowns. We have scissors. And then when I'm done, we use what's called a, a needle driver to hold sutures and suture to close the incisions. This location, I've been here since 2010. And do you notice from 2010 to now the people who come to you are younger? Do you notice that at all? Like there's like a younger demographic coming to you for stuff? I've had young people from day one. Okay. Um, the older population is coming in for things like facelift. The younger women are coming in for breast augmentations, liposuctions, then sort of middle age are coming for mommy makeovers, tummy tucks, breast augmentation, breast lift, uh, which are meant to rejuvenate and restore the body after pregnancy. Pregnancy does quite a, quite a number on, on, a, on a woman's body. Um, the pelvis stretches, skin stretches, breasts tend to stretch out and become saggy. They often lose volume. They have a lot of loose skin on their tummy. So these are things that are really irreversible changes. There's no amount of diet, no amount of exercise that's gonna fix that. I, I've seen all these things on social media, all these creams people put yeah. on and pack exercises. Save your money. Save the money. Doesn't work. So the, the BBL was like the big one. What's like, what's the next big thing that people are coming in for these days? If I only had a crystal ball, I'd be, I'd be a billionaire. Uh, but I, I was thinking about this question and, I, and, I, and I'm thinking, uh, I imagine a lot of facial work is gonna be the next big thing. And the reason for that is twofold. One, the people that were younger and were having yeah. breast augmentations, my makeovers are getting older. They'll be getting to the age when they'll be needing a a facelift and also social media unfortunately the filters what I've noticed is if you look at people on social media they have no nasolabial folds the filters give you perfectly smooth skin mm -hmm. and no folds which is normal everybody smiles everybody has these folds but I'm not getting I'm seeing people who are younger and younger coming in wanting a facelift because they are trying to get rid of this that's like when I go on which snapchat is, and I'm like, I'm like oh my god yeah. put a filter I'm like there we go that's yeah. you know yeah. yeah yeah is it safe to say like even from your point of view that like the ideal male physique and the ideal female physique is unattainable, uh, like unattainable naturally. It's either due to steroids or... Well, it's not the fitness industry that's the problem, it's the filters. Because filters are creating physiques that are humanly impossible. People are filtering and tuning all their pictures. And what's really frustrating for me is that even surgical patients after surgery, Put on filters. So even people who are out there admit that I've had a BP, I had a breast augmentation, still, still filter. Still filter. And so then people think, oh, if I get that surgery, I'm gonna look like that. You will not. They don't look like that in real life. When they come to my clinic, they don't look like that. Um, there are people out there who've come to me, uh, I don't even recognize because I, I know them wow. from social media. And when they come to me, I'm like, I, I can't even you know put one on one together. It's like, are you, are you the same person? It's, it's, it's that, that crazy. It's sad. Because it yeah. seems like no matter what, it's not good enough. Like no matter what you do. Exactly. Well, thank you for all that. That's very eye-opening and kind of scary, sad, and a lot all at it's, the same time. It's, it's a crazy world we live in. Naturally, the first thing I did after meeting Dr. Six is change my look with a brand new haircut. Then I packed my bags and headed to the city with the most attractive people, Miami, Florida. We are in South Beach, Miami. This place, it's not reality at all. Like the average guy walking around the street probably bench 315. And the last time I was here, 
It was, it was scarring to say the least. Do I look like I work out? Nope. No. Do you feel like you have body dysmorphia at all? No. No? No. You're just completely happy and like, content with how you look? Um, no, but maybe just some bigger shoulders. Yeah. Uh, maybe like some less percentage body fat, but that's about it. So just more muscle, less fat? Probably, yeah. Just what we all want, right? Exactly. Yeah. And do you think if you got bigger shoulders and bigger chest and a little less fat, do you think you'd be satisfied? Uh, probably. You think so? Probably not, right? Probably not, right? It never stops. Yeah. I just like a little bit bigger, you know, like I don't want to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger or someone, but yeah. you know. And is there any like celebrities or like influencers that you kind of look at and you kind of aspire to look that certain way? I love soccer, so okay. Ronaldo probably. Yeah, I mean, his, he's shredded. He's shredded and he maintains it all the time, yeah. so it's pretty impressive. But then don't you think that if you get that a little bit bigger, then you're gonna be like, now I want to get a little bit bigger and just keep on going? I, as I said that, I thought, you know, when I get a little bigger, then maybe it's a little bigger, then a little, then it never ends. Exactly. So maybe, At the beginning, he said he didn't have body dysmorphia, but then as we talked to him, I think we discovered that he actually does. He's like, if I get a bit bigger, I want to keep on getting bigger, and the cycle really never ends. And that's kind of the point. People think that they don't have it, but you probably have it. When you look in the mirror, do you see things that you're proud of or things that you'd rather change? I think that rather change. Rather change? Yes. Okay, like what? My body. I don't think I have a big butt. Sometimes, yeah, we don't feel as confident with our bodies. Do you feel like you're always like not satisfied with how you look? Yes. Absolutely. You have before, so how have you overcome that? Um, I think just with less social media and um, spending a lot more time by myself. Would you go the lengths of getting work done? Um, I would never go to lengths of getting work done because I think guys prefer natural bodies because BBLs are so in nowadays that like everybody just wants someone with a BBL. That's so you think, what I think. So you think guys want the girls to have the work done? Yes, because they, they like big bugs. Do you have any celebrities or like influencer people that you look on Instagram or wherever and that you, you're like, I want to look like that? Yes, Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez, okay. I feel like that's a classic one. Yeah. yeah. I think social media is detrimental to anybody who believes that it's real. Sometimes I'll be walking around and I'll be like, I'll see a girl in the same outfit as me and she may have a big butt, but like, I know most guys are gonna look at her before they look at me, I feel like, you know, cause that's what they would like. The men are more, inse more secure than the women, I think. Okay, so you think women are more insecure than men? Yes. Okay. <laughs> From a scale of one to ten, how how happy are you with how you currently look? An eight. An eight? That's really good. <laughs> yeah. And do you think that there's like? I try. And do you try. and do you think it's like a, a gotten better over time? Yeah, of course. Okay. And like, what have you done anything to get to, to a point that's better for you? To be honest, it was when I started getting exposed to different cultures, and when I like moved up because where I come from. Like body image is everything and being underweight is everything. And then when I started seeing how people celebrate diversity and how like they, they like and they're comfortable with how they look. Yeah, that kind of did play a very vital role. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I think that last answer was super interesting. So she said she got more comfortable with her body after being exposed to different cultures because at the end of the day, Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? So like from culture to culture, what they see as beautiful is different. So there's actually just not one way. So once you remember that, you're just gonna feel so much better. Out of all the people we talked to, nobody was really happy with their looks, and that's totally normal. Across all 22 countries surveyed, only 12% said they were completely satisfied in their appearance. We are currently at one of the best gyms in Miami. There are a ton of big dudes here. I feel quite small. I got body dysmorphia, what can I say? But I look like this right now, but after a few exercises, I went to pump up and look completely different and Instagram ready. surrounded by all these massive dudes, I feel strong. I'm so confused right now because I said massive PR. I feel strong as hell. Then I look to my right, I feel small as hell. Probably the biggest guy in the gym right now. You're making me feel bad about myself. Do you ever look at yourself in the mirror and be like, damn, I'm small? No, I'm looking bigger. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you never think that you look small? Never. Really? Never, never. You're just that big now. Because I feel like bodybuilders say like the day you start lifting the days, like you feel forever small. Bro, this is the mind, you know. For me, 
I work hard uh, every day. Uh, I see I am big. <laughs> yeah, you're a fucking beast. Thank Keep you. it up, man. Good luck in your competition. Thank you. Do you think you have body dysmorphia? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like you just think that you're like small as hell. It's, yeah, especially on the cut right now, you know, losing a lot of fat, so the yeah. size is not there for me right now. Do you watch a lot of like, like celebrities, like fitness influencer people, yeah. and like you yeah. want like you compare yourself to them? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like who? You're one, you're one of them. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Have you ever thought about going on steroids? No. Nah. Never. Nah. Not even just a ne never crossed your mind. There's a lot of people on steroids at this gym. Oh, oh I can tell. I just, I just can't, can't see myself doing it. Okay. I like, I like having a healthy life. Yeah, I like that. It's pretty crazy. So I, when I was like working out over there, I looked at Lewis and I was like, holy shit, I feel small. And then when I was working out by Anders, he, he's like, dude, he's like, I aspire to have a physique like you. I want big shoulders like you. So moral of the story is just like money. Someone's always gonna have more money than you. Somebody's always gonna have more gains than you. So no matter how big you get, you're always gonna see somebody else is bigger and you're gonna aspire for that. So you just gotta be happy right now and be, be happy with the journey, right? Because that's what it's all about. The gym is a place of transformation, weak to strong, fat to skinny, skinny to jacked. It's a place where people chase their goals and seek self-improvement in one way or another. But the thing is, we want it now, and that's because we rarely do any of this for ourselves. Women have to look like hourglasses, and men have the societal pressures to look like chiseled superheroes. Because of this, millions of people in our society turn to steroids in hopes of bringing physical change. For example, up to a million Britons use steroids for look, not sport, with way more people using PEDs due to body image issues than actual competitive bodybuilders. And most of these people are way too young. Just finished my workout. My arms are at least probably two inches bigger than normal. My chest is probably two inches bigger than normal. So we're gonna compare my physique now versus me right now. So I just woke up, no special down lighting, not even the best lighting right now, just my natural self, no pump. And this is what I look like. People get really upset. You go to the gym, you look at yourself in the mirror, you're freaking jacked up, pumped, sweating, crazy lighting, looking in the mirror, and you compare yourself to that moment, to when you just wake up. And that's not fair, and it causes depression in people. It makes people feel like they're small all the time. And you go down this circle, and then before you know it, you're like in this really deep hole that you can't really get out of. Like, look at this photo. I posted this not that long ago. Look at that. And then people on Instagram see that of me, and they think that's what I look like when I walk around all the time. But no, that's, this is me. This is what I look like 95% of the time. Pretty big difference. And you shouldn't be embarrassed of it, you should be proud of it, because how you look like in the gym, that's still you. It's not like it's not you. You just gotta love both sides, you know? Now obviously, it would be sick to be able to walk around and look like this, but it's just not possible. It's not possible. With social media, young people are the most vulnerable to body image concerns because they're still forming a sense of identity and finding out not what they want, but need to be. So I was interested to see exactly what the younger generation is purchasing to reach those goals. Hi, welcome. What's up, man? How's it going? I'm great, how are you? Good, dude. I'm here with my man, Antonio. So I want you to make me a basket oh, yeah. of like what you see, you know, like the young guys come in who are like starting out lifting, like what they usually get. Uh, a lot of people come and get the methyl hardcore. Methyl, literally it says anabolic testosterone right there. The crazy thing is they probably have no idea what it is that they're taking, but the fact that it says anabolic testosterone, they're just gonna put it in their basket. The anabolic? Of, of course, anabolics. Just, What's this do? Um, also helps you boost up your testosterone. Has the tribulus as well. And um, it also has DIM, which helps you uh, reduce your estrogen production. Wow, that's, what the heck? This one's really effective. I've had a friend, uh, when we used to do CrossFit, he would take uh, DHEA. It's kind of like a hormone that you put, you start producing when you're 18 years old. Okay. And uh, my friend took it and he got like really, really ripped. He got really strong, uh, wow. very effective. DHEA is a natural steroid with testosterone enhancing effects. It's banned in Canada as it can increase risk of some cancers and even banned by WADA. So no competitive athletes can use it with the NFL saying its effects are similar to those of anabolic steroids. I'll say do your research, you know, yeah. cause once you take it, like there's, some maybe adverse effects that you don't want to get later on. Yeah. Do you think these kids like who come in, do you think they have any idea what they're getting? Like, do you think they just kind of like- Um, I, you, you know, they probably don't, but it's, I also give them information, mm -hmm. um, let them know that what they're taking, the adverse effects, how can it affect like their heart or yeah. their hormone level, their production, you know, stuff like that. So, it's because, do they walk in and they're like, I want to just build the most amount of muscle and get lean as fast as possible? Cause is that, is that like their mindset? Pretty much, yeah. They just want to get really ripped, really fast. We have yet to have a tub of protein in here. Do they get protein? Yeah, they do. They we do, have. Yeah. Um, we usually sell the 
the ISO 100s are really good. Okay. The ghost is really good because- The kids love um, the ghost. There's like, there's yeah. cookie chunks in it, right? You can't go wrong. The taste is really amazing. Okay. A lot of people get it just for the taste. Okay. We get the pre-workouts. Yeah, of course. Um, we do the, the woke AF from Bucked Up. It's really good. How much, how much caffeine's in this? Um, probably like 300 milligrams of caffeine. 300? Wow. I also have the, if you, you're more of a high tolerance caffeine, the mother bucker, it has 400 milligrams of caffeine. Creatine, creatine is one of my best. Of course, five too. grams a day for life, right? Exactly. I usually push um, the hydrochloric one just because it absorbs quicker into the body. This is smart because it looks like a kind of like pharmaceutical, like a, like a like anabolic syringe kind of thing. Kind of, yeah. 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 yeah, that's pretty smart marketing. We got a very high stem pre-workout. So literally in Canada, 200 milligrams is the highest you can go. This is 300 milligrams, way too much because all they want to do is they want to look like that in a week. People who are unhappy with their bodies oftentimes develop eating disorders, which may include fasting, constant dieting, or binging and purging. 95% of these people are between ages 12 and 25, and only 10% of people suffering from eating disorders will seek professional help. So I met up with Adrian from AMP Mental Health to understand why. So is body dysmorphia something that you, you deal with often? Most patients aren't coming in here with body dysmorphia or com with complaints of body dysmorphia. Where you're gonna run into that issue a lot more is in an aesthetics office where they're going for fillers and injectables, um, Botox, et cetera. And the reason being is that they don't really see it as an issue. So they're just trying to treat the physical symptoms that they're experiencing. They're trying to uh, just make themselves more aesthetically pleasing in their own eyes, and they're not too concerned with uh, why they continue to seek more and more treatment. So it's kind of like one of those things that, for example, if like you hate your nose, and then you get a nose job, you're not still gonna be happy. It's something that you actually internally kind of process. Correct. These individuals typically aren't coming to a mental health office, right? It, it's very different if they're having body dysmorphia as a result of an injury or a trauma that they experience versus somebody who is just trying to ha achieve this perfect look. Right. right. So people who have body dysmorphia technically should be coming here, but they just decide to go elsewhere. Well, and the question is like, what, what is causing the body dysmorphia? Exactly. Why are they seeking so much perfection? Is there underlying trauma? Is, there, is it just anxiety? Is it just lack of self-esteem? What is going on with that individual? Why do they constantly look in the mirror instead of looking inward? Yeah. I think that's the question we should ask. Yeah. Do you think that people experience it in the same way, or do you think it's like very drastic? Difference? No, and there's definitely a spectrum. Okay. Um, some of the individuals are unable to cope. They will completely isolate themselves and stay, stay alone, um, and just live that sort of lifestyle. Yeah. While other people will find ways to mask it. I find that interesting that you're kind of talking about how it's just something to do with trauma. It almost has nothing to do with the issue itself. Like if you feel like you don't like, you want more muscle and you feel self-conscious about that, it might have nothing to do with actually the muscle at all. It could be something like in your, in your past that you went through and then it reflects now. Yeah, absolutely. Many psychological symptoms present as physical symptoms. And even the way that you view yourself physically can be affected by some sort of psychological trauma that you may or may not be aware of. People who are wow. physically or sexually abused at a young age sometimes don't even acknowledge that trauma um, but then they'll seek medical care because they're having or experiencing physical symptoms. Um, and they'll continue to seek treatment with, with no answers, right? There's no diagnoses, yeah. but they continue to experience, they, you s experience somatic symptoms. These are true symptoms. You can't tell the patient there's no issue, there's no stomach pain because they are physically experiencing it. And mm -hmm. the same goes for somebody who you may view as having uh, a perfect face or, or a figure or what have you but they still look in the mirror and they see something completely different. Yeah. Once you go on Instagram and you swipe right uh, on a video, there's the Paris filter, it softens the face a little bit. Most of the photos and videos that you're looking at are doctored. Do you think that the people who are affected by it actually know they're affected by it? No. Is body dysmorphia something that can be prevented? <laughs> I don't know if it could be prevented, but it could definitely be addressed much earlier. Um, and I think the, the faster that it's addressed and um, it's attacked with therapy specifically mm -hmm. and with addressing why it's happening. Is this something that happened to them in childhood where their parents were putting excessive pressure on them for perfection? I totally agree with that because I think that's something that I think I should have done when I was younger. I was bullied in school. I was overweight, lost a lot of weight. I never actually processed it or dealt with it 
in a way that I should. And then growing up in my 20s, I've never felt like worthy. I've never felt like I'm actually happy with myself. I feel like I'm finally getting to that place now, but I wish I actually took the effort to like put in the work back then. So it's much deeper than what most people think. Most people just think that they want muscle, they want to look better, but there's so much more to like unpack than just that, right? So what are some of the things that you've done over time to help address it within yourself? Again, I think it's just, it's kind of noticing and realizing what is reality and what's not. It's also just kind of ex ex accepting and just being happy with like the journey that I'm going through and just not chasing a certain, like I, I, not when I get there, I'm gonna be happy. It's like the journey is part of the destination, right? So it's like just soaking that in and like fully understanding it and just loving the process. For me, it's just like, it's made me way more confident. It's just made me overall happier and I still have my issues and stuff, but it's nowhere near what it used to be. And what, what helped you gain that insight? Because you mentioned that you started to look inward. Ooh, I think, hmm. I guess what it was, was I really cared what other people thought about me. But at the end of the day, I don't give a shit anymore. It's kind of one of those things, like, I kind of just, it's one of those things that there's, not, there's no good answer for it. One day it's just like, it's, it's like someone who's overweight and wants to lose weight. They try so many times and that one time they're like, I'm gonna do it and they actually end up doing it. Absolutely. It's like for me, it's like, I was just like, you know what, one day I'm not gonna give a fuck. When I was in high school, I would be terrified to get up and make a presentation because I was like, people are looking at me right now. They're not listening to what I'm saying. They're looking at my nose. They're looking at my redness on my cheeks. All these things I was self-conscious about. And it took away from my ability to actually do things. Like I, I, I didn't go to hockey trouts when I was good, but I was like, those people are better than me. Mm -hmm. And my mom's like, what are you doing? You're great. And I'm like, well, no, I'm, I'm like, I just, I just had no confidence. And Again, it's not one of those things that kind of like gradually built up over time, my confidence. It was just a one day thing where I'm like, Fuck it. I started YouTube later than I wanted to because I was like, I don't want to put these videos out, how my friends see it, people make fun of me. And you know, I, I, I wasn't ready for that. Honestly, I feel like the right people in your life will be there, come along and stay. Yeah, I think just listening to you is just making me realize that it's not just body dysmorphia. I think people are just constantly fearing the judgment of others and it completely just paralyzes them from from living their life there's so many people out there that have so much to offer but they're they're scared they're scared of the judgment of others mm -hmm. and it's how do i get these people to not give a shit and it's almost the same treatment as you do with somebody with ocd or with stage fright which is just constant exposure when i used to teach at, at the university of miami i would step in front of the students i was like 35 brand new, fresh, sweating, dripping sweat, not comfortable with what was going on. Heart, heart is beating through my chest. Halfway through the semester, I'm realizing my shirt's still dry. I'm not affected by this anymore. So it's the same with, with body dysmorphia. It's exposing them to those scenarios that they're fearful of, that they hide from everybody else. Once your, your brain begins to realize, oh, there is no threat, death is not imminent, there is no harm being done to me. I could just go out. How much has body dysmorphia grown over the years? Because I mean, like social media has taken over like never before. Appearance matters more than ever before. Anecdotally, it's more than likely on the rise, but there's less people seeking treatment. There's more people seeking aesthetics, plastic surgery, and, and some sort of augmentation to their body in order to achieve a look. I've never seen so many um, Brazilian butt lifts, men with pec implants, ab implants. Mm. You achieve these looks because you've done the work to get your body there and because that's a secondary result to putting in the work. That's so something that's good for you. But now we're just using it as just an aesthetic look. I think the issue is that, is that therapy is not sexy, right? Pe not. People are like, I'm embarrassed to do this thing, but I think therapy is cool as fuck. Yeah. To be able to sit down and talk about your problems, talk about your shit with somebody, and just unpack some stuff because you don't really realize if you go through something how far you can push something down inside you and you feel like you've kind of you feel like you processed it but you actually haven't and that's something that I kind of just realized with myself like I've, I've suppressed so much shit in my past and I just I, I finally dealt with it and that's like a, it's like a weight off my shoulders so it's like people especially I think kids feel like they're like oh you're a loser for going to therapy it's like no bro you're, you're freaking dope to talk about your shit and when you when you do that I think that just kind of, it just builds your confidence everywhere. You might be very triggered by a scenario that happens right in front of you. My, my brother and my sister throughout my life when I was young called me cheap. 
right? I was not making any money back then. I, I had no fun, so there was no reason to call me cheap, but they, they used that word as an attack on me. And now if somebody calls me cheap, and they might just be saying it jokingly, I can see that there's a little twitch, right? And it's only because there's a background to that. There's a history to it. A lot of people don't have any insight or self-awareness. So if you're not looking inward to figure out what's going on within you and what's driving your behaviors, then you're just gonna go for the, the easy things that are the dopamine hits. You're gonna go to the drugs, you're gonna go to anything that's exciting, you're gonna chase sex and women to mask all the trauma that's underneath. It, it, it does make you fearful for the younger generations, for sure, because like, they look up to some of these people, and like, it's like, I, when I was growing up, we didn't have Snapchat, Instagram, like YouTube was pretty much just starting by the time I was in university, so it just, it makes me feel for those, like, those kids now, and being exposed to like what they see online. So that's why I was at the gym and you see all these kids and they're so young and you can clearly tell they're blasting steroids because they think that they need to look this way. They have, like the girls are super thin because they feel like they need to look this way. And it's just, it's, it's heartbreaking. Body dysmorphia can be a spectrum where it's somebody who wants to look good and have a nice physique, but it could go down a, a well, if you're talking about an eating disorder that's involved as well, this could go down a road that has one of the highest mortality rates of any mental health disorder. Look, I'm not gonna tell you to just love yourself because I know it doesn't work that way, but what I want you to know is that there's something special about being you. You are unique and nobody can replicate that. If you chase external values without looking at your inner self, you'll always live with comparisons and never reach real happiness and self-respect. I encourage you all to have a goal to strive for, but don't wait until you reach that goal to be proud of yourself. Be proud of every step you take towards reaching that goal. We're all beautiful but not everyone sees it.